today, AMD's new GPU goes up for pre-order. Prices are finally getting better, NVIDIA is having even more issues, and RX 10,000 GPUs are the biggest overhaul ever. This is huge. Welcome everyone to Gamer Metal. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD's upcoming 9060 XT has just gone up for pre-order in China, so we get a chance to look at pricing and some availability. And I'll have affiliate links down in the description for when the GPUs actually release, so it doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Regardless, as you can see here, this does come from the official Sapphire store and they're now offering an option to place a deposit on the 9060 XT. It says this is not a full prepayment for the upcoming GPU. Instead, it's a way for gamers to secure a pre-order slot once the cards go on sale. So they basically just make a small pre-order. In this case, it's 50 RMB and buyers will be first in line when orders officially open. Now, I will state that video cards actually makes a good point here. It's kind of wild how they're even allowed to do this because board partners are technically collecting money before any reviews are released. Either way, this is happening and it does at least give us an idea of what the MSRP is in China. This is obviously with taxes and things like that, with the value added taxes, different things that they have that say the US doesn't. Either way, as you can see, so it does seem like the eight gigabyte models MSRP is $24.99, then the 16 gigabyte models is $28.99 RMB. Obviously, there are tons of GPUs that are more expensive than that, but it does at least look like they do have those GPUs at MSRP. Of course, the actual release date is June 5th. And next up, it finally happened. Prices are actually coming down. I almost don't want to say it too loud because it could vanish. Kind of like in Gladiator when Marcus Aurelius said that there was a time when you said anything more than a whisper and Rome would vanish. But first, while GPU prices are finally starting to go down, you can get them even lower when you visit today's sponsor. Jawa, the online marketplace that was literally made for gamers by gamers. And let's just say you can save a ton of money. For example, you can buy a very nice 6600 XT right now for just 250 bucks, or even an RX 580 for $80. The ultimate goal of Jawa is to put the market back into the hands of gamers. And they do that with things like their GPU resale program, so you can help offset the price of your new GPU. And GPUs aren't all they sell. They also have tons of accessories and gear for your perfect gaming setup. Don't want to build your PC? No problem. Jawa offers pre-built PCs for from boutique sellers, so you can get some fantastic deals there as well. Simply put, Jawa is the best place for gamers to go and discuss, buy, and sell their gaming gear. And if you're worried about the authenticity of the seller, don't be. Just look for the verified seller badge, which lets you know that Jawa has personally vetted the seller themselves. So stop buying your parts at absurd prices and visit Jawa by clicking my link down in the description below. Now back to the story. It's kind of how I feel right here. The 5090 has not only gotten two MSRP in one location, but we'll take what we can get. It's actually dropped below MSRP. As you can see right down here, this is specifically in Europe. And as of right now, it has actually dropped just 2% below NVIDIA's official MSRP. Okay, it's still 2,299 euros. Man, it's really hard to make this a positive. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Yes, this is good that prices are finally starting to get around MSRP. And even in this case, ever so slightly below it because the MSRP is still absurd. Regardless, this is good news, of course. As you can see right down here, the MSRP is normally 2,339 euros, but right now a couple very different GPUs are now selling it for below that. Hopefully this is a sign of things to come, but we'll take the wins where we can get them. And next up for today, Nvidia is having yet another issue. This time, it's regarding their brand new GPUs. I guess the idea of NVIDIA GPUs just working is kind of out the window at this point. As you can see right down here, it says many RTX 5060 and 5060 Ti users are encountering blank screens when restarting their system. But here's the thing, this isn't just a normal driver update, this is actually a firmware update for the vBIOS, which means that when you're doing it, if let's say you lose power, 
uh, there's a chance you could brick your GPU. And that's, of course, why they are strictly advising that only users experiencing this problem should update their firmware. And of course, this is after tons of issues NVIDIA was having with their R570 branch of drivers. I mean, they flat affected older GPUs as well. Remember, that was a blank screen issue when you restarted as well. And get this, it gets even worse because you obviously have to do this within Windows. And because of that, they actually suggest that you boot using an alternate graphic source, i.e. a secondary card or integrated GPU, meaning you just spent tons of money on this new graphics card. And just to update it, you got to have another graphics card to obviously boot the system, given the fact that you're having blank screen when booting. So yeah, I really don't know what's going on over at NVIDIA's drivers teams, but this is seriously getting out of hand. I mean, NVIDIA was known for having some of the best drivers out there. It's one argument people used against buying an AMD GPU. But just like with the performance from NVIDIA's 50 series cards, NVIDIA has disappointed here as well. I guess they really need to focus a bit less on their AI accelerators. And lastly for today, we have yet another massive leak on AMD's next-gen GPUs. I am, of course, talking about their new unified UDNA architecture, which AMD has themselves confirmed, but I'll get to all of those implications in a minute because, as you can see here, the very well-known leaker and, well, accurate leaker Kepler on Twitter recently shared this. A bunch of numbers that look like absolutely nothing. But don't worry because I'll decode them. These are GFX version numbers for AMD's MI accelerators. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who cares about AMD's MI GPUs? Those are essentially server slash AI crap. But that's where we weave our way back to UDNA. Ordinarily, we would say that, but remember that UDNA brings the two architectures together. Obviously, there will still be some differences, but this is a fundamental one, which I'll get to in a second. So it actually does matter here. And I guess the second's up because that fundamental change, as you can see right here, HXL responds and says RDNA4 referencing to this 12.5 question mark here. And it actually says, no, it seems to have some differences from RDNA 4. And this isn't some differences. This is seriously a huge one. It says, for example, 256 shaders per CU. Now that may not seem much to you, but if you know AMD's older generation architectures all the way up to RDNA 4, you know that there's only 64 shaders or cores, I guess you could say, per CU, which means we're talking a 4x increase, meaning this isn't just some small and significant change. This is a massive fundamental change that has some huge implications. If this is correct and AMD is upping their core count per CU like this, once again, 4x, it means that we should truly expect huge things from UDNA because there's simply no reason to make such a monumental change unless AMD has a really good reason. Time, of course, will tell, but AMD is cooking something up here that I don't think many people will see coming. 